Welcome to peace. Welcome to help. And welcome back to our live coverage of the 2012 Mackinac Policy Conference. I'm Christy McDonald, and we are so glad that you are joining us. We are sitting in the middle of the parlor of the Grand Hotel, and I think I'm kind of the luckiest girl around right now because not many people get to set up a new set right in the middle of the Grand Hotel. But it is our MyVote.org initiative from Detroit Public Television to keep people informed and engaged, and that's why we're here up on Mackinac Island for the Mackinac Policy Conference. For the next three days, we are going to be broadcasting everything about this conference. You're going to be able to see the sessions. You're going to see interviews with newsmakers and business leaders and CEOs and people who are with grassroots organizations that are trying to help the state move forward in many different ways. So we hope that you're going to take part of our conversations. If you're joining us from PBS stations around the state, we're so glad that you're with us. And if you're also joining us from some of our partners who are streaming um, our program live on their websites, we're happy to have you as well. If you are in social media, if you're into social media, if you're into Twitter, if you're into Facebook, make sure you come and find us at My Vote on Facebook and also My Vote, that's M I V O T E, on Twitter. And you can hashtag MPC12, which is the Mackinac Policy Conference 12, or you can also hashtag My Vote Mac, which is our own special hashtag if you want to get in on the conversation. So if you have any questions or anything you'd love to see, we'd love to hear from you. We are going to be starting the conference in just a short while. Governor Rick Snyder is going to kick everything off uh, once we get everyone in and settle down. It, probably about one o'clock in the afternoon, people really start coming into the Grand Hotel. There's going to be several hundred people here over the next couple of days talking about what issues are most important to the future of Michigan. And we're going to take you in there in just a moment. Remember, you can always, uh, you can always give us your feedback and tell us what you would like to see. Okay, in just, uh, in just a brief moment, the governor is going to be with us. And again, you know what? It's live TV, so sometimes we have to wait and see uh, when things are happening and when things aren't happening. We're going to be on the air, on the web, until 9 o'clock this evening. So we're going to take you through a lot of the sessions. And then also a very interesting thing happens here at the Grand Hotel on the first night of the Mackinac Policy Conference. There's a party on the porch. And if you've never been on the world's longest porch, you really should stop by sometime, and especially on this night. That's when you have everyone going out on the porch, and the conversations really get started. And... Um, People sometimes, critics will say, well, this is kind of a frivolous event where people come and maybe they're just uh, gathering and they're having a party. Not so much. A lot of deals get done here and a lot of those deals impact what happens in our future of Michigan. So we're going to take a careful watch in that party on the porch here this evening. And also we're going to take you now to the session, I believe. Let's go ahead and take a listen. It not only shows the popularity of the conference and how people are excited about some of the changes we made over the last couple of years, but it also shows the great strides that Michigan's economy has made thanks to our governor and our legislature and our great businesses in this state. So a round of applause for all of us for doing the hard work to get it done. But our sponsors this year, we are pleased as always to have our great friends, our diamond sponsors, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, and I want to thank their CEO, our friend Dan Lepp. Our platinum sponsors are AT&T, the Michigan Economic Development, Growth, uh, Economic Development Corporation, the MEDC, the MLive Media Group, PNC Bank, PWC, and the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. Of course, we have many more sponsors, and you'll be introduced to them as the conference goes on, and they are displayed throughout the conference. So last year, we made a lot of changes, and they have been overwhelmingly positive. I want to thank my boss and last year's conference chair, Chip McClure, who was my partner in crime last year. Chip. And through the changes we made, we have really turned the Mackinac Policy Conference into A, a statewide event, two, meaningful and proactive and results oriented, and third, truly Michigan's center stage. I also want to thank the 2010 conference chair, Barbara Alashewski, who initiated the to do list. Now, we, this is something new, and on your chairs, you have the to-do list from the 2011 conference. Every year, 
Since Barbara took control of this conference in 2010, we have created a list of things that we hold ourselves accountable for. And at your seats are the seven things that we said that we would do, and I'm very happy to report of the seven things we said we were gonna do, six are completely done, and one is actively in progress. And one of them, thank you. I think that was my mother. Um, and one of the two items, we partnered with our friends at the Metropolitan Affairs Council, and we have, and it's on your seats as well too, it is called Michigan Champions of the Global Economy. This is a direct to-do item that we work in partnership with Mac on, and we have a open source PR document that is available to any economic development organization throughout the state that tells the factual story created by business leaders, education leaders, and union leaders on how competitive Michigan is. And if you remember last year's conference, Bob King and the governor both came and had a similar message that we need to be competitive in the 21st century global marketplace, and we have done that. And I want to recognize my friend Paul Tate and Debbie Dingle from MAC for their partnership on this, on this to-do item. Thank you. So what else is new this year? First of all, we have a new stage. Pretty spiffy. I think we've done a nice job there. We are having a storyboarder. Over here, wave, that's Julie Stewart. Julie Stewart is a storyboarder. And so for every session that we have at this year's Mackinac, Julie is going to create a graphical representation of the issues that we talk about and the discussions that we have on those four by eight pieces of canvas. And we are gonna be posting these as they're completed throughout the hotel, and they will be on our website afterwards. So a new thing that we've, uh, that we've created here. We are also have throughout the conference M Live Buzzboard, so all of the social media and multimedia outlets, either on the island or off the island, are going to be fed into these buzz boards, and they're these long, thin, electronic flat panels that you see throughout, uh, throughout, throughout the hotel. We're also going to have interactive voting, so democracy has come to Mackinac Island even though cars have not. So uh, tomorrow night, we are going to have a great political panel with Harold Ford Jr., Tucker Eskew, and Donna Brazil, and you get to vote on who you would vote for president, and we're gonna get those results live on our screens as you vote. Only one vote per person, please. And then Thursday, we have, uh, we're gonna tackle two of Michigan's uh, most controversial ballot measures, or potential ballot measures, the Emergency Financial Manager Law and Right to Work, and you're gonna be able to get to vote on those two issues. So keep your clicker fingers ready to go. Also new this year, fresh off the Indy 500, we're pleased to welcome Roger Penske and his team Penske drivers tomorrow afternoon, and you're gonna be able to pose for pictures with Roger's uh, drivers uh, in the afternoon on, on the porch. We have continued our great relationship with Detroit Public Television and we have essentially taken the veil off of this conference. You can now see this conference essentially live anywhere in Michigan and on the internet anywhere in the world. So there's no more mystery uh, to this conference. So with all that, we're gonna keep the pace going. Once we get started, we're gonna keep rolling just like last year, so make sure you hit the bathroom because we're gonna keep going. So, to uh, kick us off today uh, and our inaugural evening, I want to introduce my, my other new boss, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of the Henry Ford Health System and the Chair of the 2012 Mackinac Policy Conference. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nancy Schlichting. Thank you, Sandy, and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Mackinac. You know, despite all those great things that Sandy recounted about this conference, I asked him one thing. I said, can you work on the weather? And look, we got a great day, and hopefully have two more great days. Uh, it is truly a privilege for me to serve as the chair this year for the conference, and I'm fully committed to building a better future for Michigan, as I know everyone in this room is. I know that our best days are ahead of us, and I'm excited for the opportunity to lead one of the largest annual events of its kind in the nation. 
The Detroit Regional Chamber's Mackinac Policy Conference is truly an institution in Michigan, and I take this role as chair very seriously. As we continue to plot out Michigan's course in the 21st century, the ideas and dialogue discussed at this conference will ensure Michigan's continued prosperity. This year's conference, as Sandy mentioned, has three pillars, innovation, collaboration, and the 21st century global market. Making Michigan more innovative means leading the cultural change to be more forward-looking in all sectors of our economy. Innovation is about creating greater synergy among business, government, education, and healthcare to drive long-term economic growth and talent attraction. But innovation is not possible without our second pillar, collaboration. In order to collaborate, we must develop a unified Michigan agenda that reimagines state and regional assets as a foundation to grow meaningful economic opportunities for all Michigan businesses and all Michigan citizens. The third pillar is directly tied to the first two. Success in the 21st century global market requires innovation and collaboration. And as we look to prosper in the 21st century global market, we must expand Michigan's understanding of and success in global economic opportunities. We must position the state as an attractive destination for both international talent and international investment. These pillars are the foundation of what's going to be an amazing conference. And of course, as Sandy said, none of this would be possible without the support of our sponsors. And I would also like to thank our diamond sponsor and our platinum sponsors for their amazing support. And we're really thrilled to have record sponsorship this year. This year, we have a list of very impressive national speakers, including Thomas Friedman, Fareed Zakaria, former Governor Michael Levitt, and former Congressman Harold Ford, Jr. We're also honored to have some of Michigan's greatest champions, including Roger Penske and Bill Ford, Jr. As we continue to put the policy back in the, in the policy conference, we have a fantastic lineup of political leaders and strategists, including Donna Brazil and Tucker Eskew, as Sandy also mentioned, who are going to provide, I think, amazing interest and insights uh, in this very pivotal election year. With the Motor City as one of the most crucial, at the most crucial junctures in its history, we have a very dynamic group of CEOs and decision makers here to discuss the critical issues that Detroit faces and how all of us can help to move the city forward. Like last year, Governor Snyder has been very engaged at an unprecedented level in the conference from, um, from day one. And he's once again been a great partner in the vision, the planning, and the programming, and we're delighted to have him here to kick off the conference this afternoon. He's brought on the same hands-on approach uh, to the conference. In an astoundingly short period of time, he's made Michigan dramatically more competitive, and no one has done more to make the state more business-friendly and globally relevant. His leadership and vision has led the state through very turbulent times and has positioned the state to thrive in the 21st century. His willingness to stay above partisan pol politics and his mantra of relentless positive action has been the key to Michigan's success. And he has also made being a nerd pretty cool. <laughs> and that's pretty good for people like me, and I know a lot of young people around the state that like to study hard. So at this point, I'd like to ask all of you to welcome Governor Rick Snyder. Thanks, Nancy. That was great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Please be seated. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you. Please grab a seat. Thank you. Well, that's an incredible welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and think about coming to Mackinac Island again. I want to congratulate the Grand Hotel. But when you walk on the porch, people said, did you bring the weather? I said, higher authorities did. But this is pure Michigan. You can't do any better than this. It's awesome. And it's great to be part of the conference again. Last year was a huge success, and I really appreciate all the hard work of the Detroit Regional Chamber and how they pulled this together. And it is an important opportunity. Um, before I talk about the elements of the conference, which I briefly want to cover with you, and I'm going to do it short today, because you're stuck with me on Thursday. Um, but to set the stage, I want to share some thoughts. First, I want to make two or three announcements of some important things, though, I'd really encourage you to think about and do. And this first one's a very personal thing to me. I recently made a trip to Afghanistan. And we're having a session tomorrow, I believe at 11.30, on our veterans and about hiring veterans. 
and the employment opportunities, because unemployment for our veterans is running about 30%. And that's simply unacceptable. And the people that can do a lot to solve that problem are us. So I know you're busy, and I know there are a lot of occasions to say there are so many other competing things. But I ask you as a favor, an important thing, to say thank you to our veterans by attending that session. And not just attending the session, but then asking what your organization can do to really highlight our veterans. Our guards people are reservists and their family members, because they're making a tremendous sacrifice for us. I could not be prouder of the people serving our country and the Michiganders doing that. Just to share one thing with you, it was absolutely amazing. I was in a forward operating base in Afghanistan, and the unit had nine soldiers that asked that I hold their reenlistment ceremony in the field. These are people that had been on their first tour of duty. They hadn't even finished their first tour. They were reenlisting. And there were people that had been on their third tour. They had been to Bosnia, Iraq, and Afghanistan and were signing up again. So we need to help these people. So I ask you to do everything possible to make the session and to hire them. That would be great. The second, thank you. The second thing I want to do is actually congratulate the Detroit Regional Chamber again for their leadership in a new effort and actually ask you to do some homework or look at that as it got announced today. It was very exciting. The Detroit Regional Chamber has started an economic development campaign to really bring more branding, more identification, more teamwork and collaboration to marketing the region. And it's a great opportunity. Um, we actually are having great success here, but we have a problem. Michiganders are too humble. We don't brag well. Actually, I got yelled at by one of the newspaper people over the weekend on that topic. We have to speak up more. We are the comeback state in the United States right now. And think about this. How often do you think you're going to hear someone from the East Coast or the West Coast tell all their friends that Michigan's the comeback state? The place it has to start with are Michiganders. And it's time for us not to brag, not to be arrogant, but to point out the facts that we are back and we're going to keep coming back. And to build on efforts that the Detroit Regional Chamber's being a great partner on to help promote that. The third thing, and then I'm done with my commercial announcements. The third thing, though, I really ask you to consider while you're here at the conference is something that the MEDC is doing with all the regional partners that they have across the state, which is something called Pure Michigan Business Connect and Pure Michigan Talent Connect. And they're on the parlor level near the porch. If you haven't signed up, if you're an employer and haven't signed up to join mitalent.org, which is the Talent Connect piece, which is basically going to promote you to millions of Michiganders that are looking for positions, it's great for you. It's a win for all of us. So I encourage you to sign up for Talent Connect. And then for Business Connect, it's about Michiganders doing business with one another. And it's been highly successful. We actually had two great lead-off partners. We had DTE and Consumers Energy. They both committed collectively they were going to do $100 million more of business a year each year for five years. Last year was the first year. They ended up doing over $300 million worth of business. And I want to say thank you to both those companies and all the partners that are part of that. And it's the best program we ever build. It doesn't cost the state any money, and it's people helping people. There's common sense. So let's get that done. Now to the conference. What a great opportunity we have here today, and I love the themes. Innovation, collaboration, 21st century global market. Each one of those themes, innovation. We need to be more innovative. To our credit, we actually help lead the nation already in innovation because of our great research universities and all the great research and development done by our industrial companies and our agriculture community. We don't recognize that often enough. But what we need to do is a cultural transformation. Because it's not about avoiding risk when you innovate. It's about how to manage risk. 
And too often we got too conservative and tried to avoid risk. And instead of saying, let's recognize the world is changing, how do we innovate, how do we manage that risk? And along with innovation, I ask you to think about two other things. Because innovation on itself is fabulous, but it's not enough. And you're going to hear some great innovators on panels. Innovation are sustainability, which is a different context than the normal way you hear it in green. Sustainability in this context means it's something that doesn't happen once. It's something that goes on and continues. It's an ongoing innovation that will last. And the second piece besides sustainability is scalability. There's a lot of brilliant professors that if you ask them, they're really good at building one thing once. We're a manufacturing state. We're a state that makes stuff. Scalability is also important. So ask those three questions, innovation, sustainability, and scalability, because we're going to be the best in the world on those. The next one is collaboration. And I'm going to speak a lot about that on Thursday, because to me, from a personal perspective, in terms of a leadership perspective, that's a huge issue that we just need to do better on. And what do I mean by that? Too often we've gotten in silos. We have a silo of the public sector, a silo of the not-for-profit sector, a silo of the private sector. And if you think about it, too often we'll look to one sector saying solve this problem. How many times have you thought or had people say, well, the government's just got to come solve that? That's not the role of government. We're here to give you great customer service, but one of the best roles we can play is a convener and a coordinating organization to bring together all three sectors. The real power is when you bring all three sectors together, you have success. And one of our greatest opportunities is in the area of talent. I talked about mitalent.org. Again, that's by having the private sector come sign up and give us your job opportunities, we're being that collaborator, bringing all the sectors together. Because think about that. There are over 80,000 open jobs on mitalent.org. If we filled those 80,000 jobs, we would drop our unemployment rate by over two percentage points. That's cool. That's huge. So collaboration is something you can really bring. And the last one is the 21st century global market. It's a reality. We all know that. But what we need to do is say, let's be proactive. We should be leading the charge where everything we're doing, we should be asking, how do we export it? Every single item. We're a state that makes things. Whether we grow it, build it, manufacture it, we should be selling to the globe. And then we should be saying, we're the place to build it. If you're someplace else in the world, come here. And it's a great opportunity. What I would say, though, in closing, in terms of putting a perspective on all this, is I did mention we're the comeback state in the United States. That is a true fact. But what I would tell you is, is now is not the time to be satisfied. I'm not satisfied at all where we're at. We have to avoid complacency. We have to avo avoid being content. We should actually be accelerating. And that's why I'm excited about this conference. This conference done right, it was done right last year, it's gonna be done right this year, it's an accelerator. It's not about doing nice things with one another. It's about reinventing Michigan. And it's about us collaborating to decide we're simply going to do it with relentless positive action and get the job done. So I encourage you, as you go around, do not make this a nice event. <laughs> make this an event that makes a difference. We control the fate of Michigan, all Michiganders do together, the 10 million of us. There's a lot of other problems in the world, but if Michiganders come together with relentless positive action, we can recreate a situation that makes us one of the greatest places to be in the world. We've got every piece going for us, we just need to do it together. So I encourage you to stand together, to have that pride, to go tell everybody else in the country where they come back state, but show that attitude between ourselves and let's reinvent Michigan. Have a great conference. Thank you so much.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Executive Officer. And you have been watching Governor Rick Snyder as he's kicked off the Detroit Regional Chamber's 2012 Mackinac Policy Conference. He said, don't make it a nice conference. Let's get some things done. He pushed the points of saying that Michigan is back and that we should be selling to the globe. And now is not the time to be satisfied. And he urged all the business leaders here and the politicians to use this conference as an accelerator. So we're going to keep it going here this afternoon with the next session. It's focusing on innovation, entrepreneurship as a catalyst for economic recovery. Let's go ahead and take a listen to Josh.